Surrey Docks, that loop on the south bank where the Thames embraces Bermondsey and Rotherhithe and the borough of Southwark. For two centuries, this was part of the thriving port of London. But when general cargo handling gave way to containers and the waterborne traffic moved downstream to Tilbury, the Surrey Docks were closed. Now, it is easy to romanticise the past and to be sentimental about its passing. And it was sad when Surrey Docks closed. But this is a prime site in London, probably the best inner city site in Europe, ripe for development, made ready for development, and already being developed. The London Borough of Southwark has acquired the land, planned its future, prepared the sites, and started building. But the government thinks it would be better if a development corporation were to carry on with this work, and that the borough would dispute. What's more, it says, it is prepared to be judged both by what it has done and what it is planning to do. Do you think you've gone about this in the right way? We've tackled the job really well, we think. We started off with a rubbish dump, a whole load of water, and now we're really tackling the job and getting a lot of uh, work done in the best sort of way. It's just beginning to show, certainly above the surface. Would you prefer to press on alone? We would like to tackle the job because we think we can do it. What would you do if you were left yourselves? We would carry through what we've started. we bought the land, which is supposed to be a problem. we put in the drains and the sewers, and we started putting in open space, new facilities, building housing, and laying out all the stuff that we can see all around us now. Do you think your ideas are imaginative enough? We think that they're creative and we think that we're tackling what people need. Now, if the Development Corporation take it over, do you think they'll be compelled by the sheer magnitude of what you've already done to continue along the same lines? We have laid out uh, a basic framework for the development of Surrey Docks, which we don't think could be departed from, uh, well, at least not departed from sensibly, and anybody who takes over from us would need to carry through the thrust of what we're doing. Do you feel aggrieved that it might be taken from you? Not aggrieved, disappointed, because it's a great challenge and opportunity and we think local government can do it and we're doing it really well anyway. Now, whoever does it, how long do you think it'll be a building site? Up to five or ten years more, maybe. 1990, perhaps, before it's all done? Could well be. And then what will it be like? A super place for people living here and for people coming here to enjoy a wide range of facilities. Greenland Dock will have been done as a recreational center and uh, uh, rather high and these areas immediately here, the river opened up, a splendid place. A super place, a splendid place. But did it begin simply as a twinkle in the borough's eye or was there a considered plan from the start? Well now Bob Maxwell, did the borough act at once the moment it knew that the docks were going to be closed? Yes, as soon as we appreciated the docks were going to close, we immediately uh, put forward a plan for action. Now, was this a plan you just drew up in an office? No, it's a plan that we drew up in an office to start with, but we then consulted local people and businesses in the area to get their views. And when you got their views and took them into account, did you then have a plan just for a sort of massive housing estate? Not at all. No, the area is actually quite, quite complicated. Over 7,000 people live in this area, and there are also many businesses in the surrounding parts of the dock. And so what was your plan was to build on that? Or? Our plan was to build on that and to extend it and to bring new people into the area, new jobs into the area, and also to provide recreational facilities to serve this part of Southwark which is short of these things. And did you have plans also for anything sort of spectacular? Yes, I think the most spectacular site perhaps is the 120 acres in the centre of Surrey Docks, uh, which is to be developed by the Lysander Estates company. Well now once you'd made your minds up what you wanted to do, what was the next most important step? The next most important step was to acquire the land. Hugh Watkins, how much land did the borough acquire? 370 acres. I gather you bought it in three bits? We did. The first instalment, chiefly the housing area and partly public open space, was purchased in 1975 for £3,400,000 and that's about 135 acres. And the second site? The second instalment uh, the Southwark site was purchased in 1976 uh, together with the GLC and between us we paid £2,600,000. Half each? Half each. For how many acres? 
Uh, at that time, it was 135 acres. And the third site? Uh, about 100 acres, uh, commonly known as the Greenland Dock area. We bought that in 1976 for two million pounds. Now, is your plan to hang on to all that land or to lease some of it? A bit of each. The housing area, chiefly, the intention is for the council to develop it itself. Uh, whereas other parts of the site, notably the Lysander scheme, we intend to lease for 125 years and also part of the industrial site. So, having drawn up its plans and acquired the land, the borough had now to prepare the site, and that was a major civil engineering job. Now, Wally Warner, what were the special problems? Uh, when uh, the borough acquired this uh, site, part of the docks were filled, uh, but uh, filled with random arisings from all over London, which meant that uh, the, the fill was of a varying density and not consistent and poor structural characteristics. So you couldn't build on it until you pounded it all down? That's right. So it was in fact pounded down using uh, big weights dropped from big heights. So you've now got a stable building site with access? Yes, we do. And did you regard this as a difficult job or an unusual job? Yes, it was difficult and unusual because uh, it's not every day you build in, a, in Dockland and uh, going through dock walls uh, proved quite uh, difficult. The burden of the borough's case is that it has got on with the job, a point the Surrey Docks coordinator, Philip Turnuth, made when we flew over it. In the area stretched out below us, there are about 80 different projects, large and small. We've got houses, roads, open space, parks, works to the dock wall, sewers, site preparation. And they all, they all involve architects, engineers, landscape architects, quantity surveyors, a whole host of different professions. And they've all really pulled together well. And they've responded to the challenge in the most amazing way. When you look down on it, can you see the finished thing in your mind's eye as well? Yes, indeed. You can see Industry One there below, and you can see, you can imagine spreading out from that a whole new industrial estate. And with the Lysander scheme above it, we'll have a whole new industrial park here with about three quarters of a million square feet of industrial floor space. Now just imagine that in what was derelict Dockland. And then over to the north, a new housing area with a, with a park running through it and water features. A glorious little community that we've got uh, springing out before us now. Is it exciting working on a thing like this? Tremendously. It's the most exciting thing I've ever done. Well, once the site was prepared, once, as it were, the underground work was completed, it, it was then possible to start building above ground, and that became, of course, the job for the architects. Now, Leon Robinson, why did you choose to build that kind of housing? Well, we took uh, experience from uh, um, other large housing areas in post-war years, not least of all from new towns. And we rather felt that uh, low-rise houses with individual gardens was rather more acceptable to the public in this area rather than some of the tower blocks where the families seem to be uh, dispersed in the sky. The, the houses are interconnected with uh, footway systems and road pattern systems that enable the tenants to get conveniently to shops, uh, to the schools and to places of work. And for the children to get out and play. Yes, and in fact, uh, this first housing area here is adjacent to the first uh, play area, football pitches, uh, etc. And do you think people are going to um, fall over each other to go and live in them? I would think that the, this particular area would be probably the most popular area in Suffolk. Well, the man who will be the first to know whether that is true or not is John Southgate. John, is this the kind of housing you want to manage? Indeed. It, in terms of management, it can only be classified as an exciting time. But what's exciting about it? Well, the strategy and the mix which has been applied generally to the approach to housing in Surrey Docks has been aimed at making up a deficiency of houses. This particular scheme um, comprises a, a predominance of houses 
with gardens, which surely must be the envy of most people who want to occupy housing accommodation. When you talk about strategy and mix, though, what do you really mean? Just different houses? Or? One has to try in any development to get the right mix of accommodation to suit the needs of the area. And in downtown area of Surrey Docks, there has been almost a complete absence of housing. This establishes a, a, a large area, 281 dwellings, predominantly houses with back gardens, and this is the sort of thing that the majority of tenants look forward to occupying. Uh, we thought it was a pipe dream that they would once, when they were built, that we would have them. But the council kept the word, and uh, now we've got them. Oh, they, not all of the people in downtown, it's sad to say, because there's not enough. There's only 281. But um, there's been a project team put together, and we, are, uh, we have built a criteria to say the oldest residents, unbroken residents, um, we'll have the first opportunity and um, that is nice even if some of them don't want to take it it's nice to have the offer and lots of the younger people with children are very excited and uh, they can't get over it quick enough I really had hopes that this would happen and uh, you know <laughs> lots of the, the tenants say is it really true are we really going to have them at last you know and they're very excited about it because you know the government thinks a development corporation should run it not the borough We've not no squams with Borough Council. I think they're, they've, been, they've uh, really been good to us anyway. I mean, um, there's things sometimes that uh, you don't always agree with, but on the whole, they've kept their word. They said that um, they would be for the downtown people and they uh, are for the downtown people. It's nice to have a house with a garden, but is there also somewhere to go for a walk? Yes, we're currently constructing a 17-acre public park in which we're planting 6,000 trees it's based on the former Russia dock, mm -hmm. and we're opening up part of that dock to make a canal running through the site. And because it's based on that dock, we call it the Russia dock woodlands. I, when I looked around, I noticed you've got some new football pitches too. Yes, we've got three full-size football pitches and a seven-lane grass running track. Now, all this makes it a nice place to live, but what about a place to work? Well, the first phase of our industrial site, 100,000 square feet of new modern industrial units, has been completed and is virtually fully occupied. I mean, people are at work there already? There are at work in these units already. Now, you mentioned this prime site, this Southwark site, and I gather things are about to happen there. Can we go back and have a look at that? And this, I understand, was the winning entry in a competition. Yes, this is the Lysander Estate Scheme. And well, what does it entail? Well, the main component of it is a shopping centre, an all-weather, fully enclosed shopping centre in the middle, and to the north of that, past these dock basins, which will be opened up and used for um, small craft coming in and out of the Thames, is an uh, exhibition and conference centre linked to a hotel. And beyond that, about 350 houses and flats which come right up to the Thames. And this is the old lock entrance into Surrey Docks, which has been opened up again. And if we come right down the site again uh, to Lower Road, the main road passing the Lysander scheme, an office campus developed around the northern part of Camden Dock, about half a million square feet of, of um, office development here, and within easy walking distance of the East London line. Will there be any industry as well? We have a very large industrial site here, half a million square feet of new industrial floor space as an extension of our own phase one industry, which uh, has just been completed. Now, this will be a private development. You will lease the land to them, will you? We will lease the land to the Lysander Estates Company on a 125-year lease. And is the money available privately to finance all this? We understand it is. Next to the Lysander site is Quebec Dock, now filled in and pounded down. If all goes well, this will be the site of the new Associated Newspapers building, right across the road from the first phase of the industrial estate where I met the leader of the council, John O'Grady, and I asked him if the dockland is the heartland of the borough. I think so, apart from the fact that it is my ward, it affords the opportunity that uh, occurs nowhere else in the borough for the development of new housing, new styles, new recreation, and mainly the opportunity for an enormous increase in employment in the borough. Do you think that in the end the dock lands, when they're redeveloped, will provide even more jobs than the original docks did? 
Oh, absolutely. The docks themselves probably provided no more than 2,000. Uh, when completed, I hope that we'll be talking in the region of 15,000 jobs in Surrey docks. An enormous increase. And of course, a filled-in dock with a building on it provides more rates than a lump of water. Well, that is a very important element to what is uh, uh, traditionally a poor borough. We shall be able to do things without increasing the rates from the revenue that we obtain uh, in Surrey docks. And therefore you think you should be allowed to continue with the development? Absolutely. Uh, the proposition that uh, the boroughs are not capable of uh, developing in a proper manner is disproved, in my view, by what is already happening in the Surrey docks itself. But if you lose and the, they decide to go ahead with the development corporation, will you cooperate? We must. Our concern is for the proper development of the docks. If we don't uh, have a say in how it is developed, it may not be developed to the benefit of the people of the borough. It may be developed, but for persons other than the people that I represent. So obviously we've got to do more than cooperate, we've got to insist that our view is taken account of. Do you think we've already done enough, in fact, to have determined the shape of the development anyway? Well, that is one of the beauties of Surrey Docks compared with the rest of Docklands, that we have advanced our planning for the area and have developed within the area to an extent that the new London Docklands Development Corporation can do little to change the form of the development within the docks. There are aspects that they can affect, but not the form of development. But isn't that yet another case for your being allowed to go on then? Oh, again, absolutely. Uh, I think the government have got this wrong. What we have said over a long period is, give us the money and we'll finish the job. They haven't really given local authorities sufficient cash to be able to do the job as well as we would like or as quickly as we would like. They're now offering greater sums of money to a new organisation. Had they offered that money to us, we would have advanced, in my view, at a faster rate than this new organisation will. But you still think that you've done enough to prove that you should be allowed to finish? I wish ministers, particularly uh, the Minister of State for the Environment, would really spend a long time down here looking at what is going on instead of imagining what isn't going on. The evidence that we could place before him really should reassure him of the ability of local government and turn him away even at this late stage from the rather foolish path that he is determined upon. But if he takes that path, you still think that the Dockland part of Southwark will be a place to live? Oh, yes. I think what one has to realise is that we've provided the basic form of the development. We've provided a launching pad for whichever organisation finally is responsible for the development, but my view is that Southwark is best equipped to continue with the development and will do it a damn sight better than anyone else. It's not every day you build in, a, in Dockland. Sprung up out of the ground like magic. We thought it was a pipe dream. A splendid place. Give us the money and we'll finish the job. <laughs>